Okay, so this is a question that's in the textbook on balanced forces. So I'm just going to run through how to solve these problems. So what we have here, the drawing's not great, but we have a bow and arrow, and we have a force of 95 holding the bow's strings back. And the question says, uh, it wants us to work out the tension in each part of the bowstring in this position, so while it's being held back. So this is to do with balanced forces. This bow at the moment is in what we call equilibrium. It means that all the forces on it are balanced. And we can often use this to help us work out problems. So what we can do is if we can work out what the horizontal components of these bits of the string are, we know that they're going to be equal to the 95. So we know that the tension in this string and this string, the horizontal components of those tensions, so the bit that's making it go this way, are going to be equal to the 95. So what I first need to do is first I need to find the horizontal components of this tension. So it's like the, the video I did before on finding the horizontal components. So for this one here, I want to find this bit. So if I draw it on, let's get an arrow. Let's do there. Let me just get another color. Should we choose purple? purple? Yeah. Okay. So this component of the bowstring, of this piece of the string, is simply going to be, because it's next to the angle, it's going to be the tension times cos of 70. So tension times cos of 70. And this one is actually going to be identical, because it's identical. Um, the tension in the string will obviously be identical if it's pulled at the same angle. So this is quite a nice problem because it's 70 degrees and 70 degrees. So the tension of this part of the bowstring that's going horizontal is also T cos 70. So T cos 70, like so. So now we know the horizontal component, the 95 is pulling this way, and then we've got two lots of T cos 70 going this way. So what we can do for this one is we can actually put them equal to each other because we know that for it to be in balance, these two components must equal this one. So we can say um, 95 equals T cos 70 plus T cos 70. Now we can add them together because they're talking about T cos 70s, so 95 is equal to 2t cos 70 and then what we want to do is we know the tensions are the same um, so we just want to solve for t so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide 95 by 2 cos 70 and leave the t here so I'm going to do 95 divided by 2 cos 70 and I can separate that, I can leave the t there because it's all times in the cos 70. So I'm only going to move the, the two, I could move the 2 and then move the cos 70, it's not a problem. So if I do that, that should be my tension. And put that in the calculator, we do 95 over 2 cos 70. And we get 138.8. So that means, actually no, it's 138.88, so it'll be 89. That'll be 9 there. There you go. Cool. So we can say it's approximately 140. It's nicer. So we can say that the tension in each bit of this bowstring must be 140 newtons. Then it says, what's the resultant force on the arrow? Okay. Well, for this to be in equilibrium, then the arrow must also be receiving 95 newtons because there's 95 newtons this way. And so the components of the 
bowstring are acting on the arrow that way, and we know they're equal to 95. So the resultant force on the arrow must just be 95 newtons. So for anything to be in equilibrium, the horizontal and the vertical forces must be balanced, they must be the same. So if it's 95 this way, then the force on the arrow must also be 95.